Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mihir Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to score 30 marks from practical sums for all the TYBMS students for semester 5 under the subject Commodity and Derivative Market. I can assure that once you all will go through the entire video, you can get easily 30 marks from all the practical sums that can appear in your paper. Now, under commodity and derivative market, there are three types of problem sums that can appear. One can be based on option. Second will be based on fair value of future. And third is based on hedging, where we need to calculate the future payoff. So, there are three types of sums that will appear in the paper. Now, we are going to learn how to solve each one of them. Okay, so we will start off with the very first one that is options so now let us see and let us learn how to solve some based on options okay now let us check the first example as to how to calculate the profit or loss based on option positioning when there is a call option and it is based on the buyers payoff so i'll read the question once it is said that Rajesh buys a call option of ABC Limited at an exercise price of rupees hundred with a premium of rupees three. Calculate the profit or loss on the option position for Rajesh if the spot price on expiry is as follows. Now they have given you the spot price on the expiry, so that's 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. And thereafter, they also said that uh, draw the payoff diagram for the same. So now let us see how we need to solve the sum based on call option when there is a buy option given to us. So first of all, we'll just note down the heading. Uh, we'll have to first create a table, but before the table, we'll note down the heading of the table. So it will be called as uh, the sum is based on call option. So we'll note down call option when now there is a buy call in this so we'll write here buyers or holders payoff okay now remember we'll have to create a table which will have basically five columns so the first column the heading will be exercise price And we'll give an abbreviation for it as X. The second column will be spot price. We'll abbreviate it with S. The third column will be intrinsic value. We'll write it as IV. The fourth will be call premium receive we'll abbreviate it with C and last column will be our profit or loss now as per the question the exercise price given is rupees 100 and the spot price are given to us in different range so 96, 97, 98, 99, 100 one two three four five so basically we have been given 10 spot price so we'll have to first note down the exercise price so at exercise price 100 the very first spot price given is 96 for the second one it is 97 and so on so we'll first complete this table so there are 10 spot price so we'll note down the exercise price for the 10 of them and we'll note down the spot price accordingly the exercise being the exercise price will be the same for all the cases. We have 102, 103, 104, and last one will be 105. Okay, so the first two column basically we just noted down from the question whatever data has been given to us. Now comes the most important part the intrinsic value. Remember when we are solving some based on call option and in that whenever we have a buy call always remember the intrinsic value 
up to you know the you know up to the spot price when it matches the exercise price the intrinsic value will always be zero so price when uh, you know the, the position when your exercise price is equal to spot price up to that level okay the intrinsic value will all be zero reason when we are having a call option and we are taking a call at you know the exercise at 100 so anything any amount below that will not fetch you any intrinsic value it will only be above that okay so after the point when the exercise and spot are matching thereafter the intrinsic value will be the positive difference between the exercise price and spot price so the intrinsic value uh, for the you know for this particular case will be 100 and 101 so the difference is 1 for the next the difference will be 2 3 rupees 4 rupees and 5 rupees next comes this call premium receive since it's a buy call your premium will be negative since we are going to pay for it so for all the cases okay the premium will be negative 3 so we note down the values as negative 3 for all the cases Okay, now the last thing that we need to find is the profit and loss because that's the thing that they've asked us to find. Now remember the profit and loss will be calculated as, you know, basically it will be nothing but intrinsic value and the difference between the call premium. So 0 minus 3 gives you negative 3. 0 minus 3 again will give you negative 3. 0 minus 3 is negative. This is basically your loss. Okay. Since it's a call option and you're taking an exercise price of 100. So any amount which is less than 100 will give you the loss of the amount that you have used as a premium. So 0 minus 3 is again negative 3. 0 minus 3 again negative 3. After this particular point where your spot price is now going to be more than your excess price. So here now there will be a difference in the profit and loss. So 1 minus negative 3 is negative 2. 2 minus negative 3 is negative 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 4 minus 3 is positive 1, so here you are trying getting actually profit and 5 minus 3 is positive 2. So this is the payoff table of option position when they have been given you a call option where you have a person buying the call. Okay, very simple, you note down the exercise price, you note, note down the spot price, the difference, okay of your exercise spot is the intrinsic value but always remember whatever exercise price you have taken it as okay amount you know below that will always be zero and only after that it will be a positive difference call premium will be negative since there is a buy option whenever you buy you're going to pay for it so the premium is going to be negative the difference between the intrinsic and call premium is nothing but your profit and loss so this is how we prepare the table or the payoff table of call option now same thing let us see how we can pose this thing in a diagrammatical form because they have also told us to draw the payoff diagram for the same. So there is a small sketch which has been made up. So this is my uh, y axis. This is our x axis. Okay. We will start off with zero. Okay. The top and bottom y axis will include your intrinsic value and profit and loss. Okay, so since the numbers are in 1, 2s and 3, so positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, positive 5, positive 6. Bottom maybe we'll have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Now x-axis, uh, you know, contains your spot prices. So our spot price was 96, starting from 96. So 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101. 102, 103, 104 and 105. Okay, now let us start marking the point which have been given to us. So now at first, first we'll mark down all the intrinsic value and thereafter we will mark down our profit and loss values. Okay, so at a price of 96, the intrinsic value was 0. So at 96, it was 0. At 97 also, it was 0. At 98, 0. 99, 0. At 100 also 0. Now after that there has been a change. Okay. At a price of 101. Your intrinsic value has become 1. So now 1 comes here. So we'll mark down that point. So this is my point. Where it is profit of 1. The intrinsic value as well. Not profit sorry. 
at 102 spot price my intrinsic value was 2 so i marked down at 102 my second point where i'm getting my intrinsic value as 2 at 103 it is going to be 3 at 104 it's going to be 4 and at 105 it's going to be 5 so I'll just mark it. You can take the help of a ruler in this case also, okay? So that's basically my intrinsic value. So now if I try to join it, now since they were all zero, so I don't have to mark it here. So from here, we have to, you know, basically mark all the points. So we're going to mark it down. Okay, and then there's a, there's a, a bit of hinge here. So we just mark down. So that's my intrinsic value. So I'll note it on my key that the straight line is nothing but my intrinsic value. Now, similarly, we'll have to make for profit and loss. So now look at this. When your spot price was 96, okay, the profit was negative. Basically, there was a loss of negative 3. So I'm marking it down as this is my negative 3. At 97 also, it was negative 3. At 98, negative 3. At 99, again there was a negative 3. At 100, again there is a negative 3. Now, from 101, there has been a upward shift that's negative 2. At 102, the loss is negative 1. Now at 103, there is no loss, no profit. So it is at an equilibrium price. At 104, you are actually earning the first profit. And at 105, you are earning the profit of rupees 2. Now we'll just join these points. So when you when you basically join it, okay, you will see that there is parallel line between the intrinsic value and the profit and loss so this is how we have to solve the sum which is based on call option where you have buyers or holders payoff so this is the tabular representation of the answer and this is your diagrammatical representation of the answer okay i hope everyone have understood this is the very first sum which is based on call option where you have buyers payoff Okay, now to understand the call option, buyers, holders, payoff, we'll take another second example. I'll just read out the question once. It's given that Max buys a call option of ABC Limited at an exercise price of 500 with a premium of rupees 30. Calculate the profit or loss on the option position for Max if the spot price of ABC on expiry is as follows. Then they are giving you different spot prices. 460, 70, 80, 90, 500, 510, 20, 30, 40 and 50. So basically there are 10 spot prices which have been given to us and thereafter they have told us draw the payoff diagram for the same. So now let us see how to solve this sum using first the tabular method. Now under the tabular method uh, we have created a table having 5 columns. The very first column has exercise price which is 500 as per the sum now, since there are 10 spot prices so i'll note down rupees 500 at all the 10 places so we have 500 first second third fourth fifth sixth seven eight nine and ten the spot prices are given to us so it's ranging from 460 Next is 470, 480, 490, 500, 510, 520, 530, 540 and last one is 550. The next column that we need to find is the intrinsic value. Now since it's a buyer's payoff table, remember the intrinsic value up to the point where exercise price and spot price are equal, the intrinsic value will be zero. 
देर आफ्टर दे विल बी पॉजिटिव डिफरेंस बिटवीन दी एक्स राइस प्राइस एंड द स्पॉट प्राइस सो फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड टेन सो द इंटरेस्टिंग वैल्यू इज टेन नेक्स्ट में इट विल बिकम ट्वेंटी देन द डिफरेंस इज थर्टी फोर्टी एंड फिफ्टी सिंस देर इज अ बाय कॉल ओके सो द प्रीमियम वैल्यू इन दिस केस विल बी नेगेटिव एंड द वैल्यू इज थर्टी सो फॉर ऑल द केसेज द प्रीमियम वैल्यू विल बी नेगेटिव थर्टी so we are noting down all the values as negative 30 the last part is where we need to find the profit or loss so now profit and loss is nothing but the difference of intrinsic value and call so 0 minus 30 will give you negative 30 again 0 minus 30 is negative 30 negative 30 negative 30 negative 30 thereafter it is 10 minus 30 so negative 20 negative 10 we have a zero that's the equilibrium then 40 minus 30 is positive 10 and lastly we have positive 20 so our profit and losses is in the form of negative 30 all up to a point where spot and exercise are same okay thereafter we have you know the profit and loss changes so it become negative 20 10 0 10 and 20 so this is how we have to create the call option bias payoff table Now let us see the same thing how we put it into the graphical format. Now your y-axis will have all our intrinsic value and the profit and loss. So the intrinsic and will all will you know your y-axis and x-axis intersection point will be your zero rate. Now thereafter there is going to be a difference of ten. So we can see there is a ten ten ka difference every way. So I'll note down as ten, twenty, thirty. Forty, fifty, and sixty. Same way, we'll have negative ten, negative twenty, negative thirty, negative forty, and negative fifty. Now, for your x-axis, where we note down all our spot rate. My very first spot price is four hundred and sixty. Then we have four hundred and seventy, four eighty, four ninety, five hundred. 510 520 530 and lastly 560 now let us see how to mark the intrinsic value and the profit and loss on our graph now at the spot price 460 70 480 490 and 500 the spot rate for each of the cases or the intrinsic value for each of the cases were zero so i'll just mark down those points so we have you know all those values up to 500 zero thereafter at 510 at 510 the intrinsic value became 10 so i'll mark down that as 10 at 520 it became 20 so i'll take that At five hundred and thirty, it became thirty. Thereafter, five forty, it became forty. And at five fifty, it became fifty. Okay, so we will join this. So I'll note down this as my intrinsic value. so it starts off with a straight you know it's a flat line and thereafter there is an increase so that's my iv now similarly we'll start marking and finding out the value you know the the graphical point of profit and loss so when your spot price was 460 70 80 90 and 500 the profit and loss was negative 30 each so at 460 it was negative 30 At four seventy negative thirty, four eighty negative thirty, four ninety negative thirty, and five hundred a negative thirty. Now, at five hundred and ten, your profit became negative twenty. So we'll mark that as five hundred and ten at negative twenty. Then it became negative ten at five twenty. So we will take that as five twenty. At 5:30 it became zero, so we mark that as zero. At 5:40 a positive 10, so we'll take that as a positive 10. At 5:50 the last one we got it as a positive 20, so 
so we'll take that as 520 i'll mark that as 20 and now so so here again for the start till the you know till the point where your spot and exercise are equal it is a flat line later after there's going to be an increase okay so the first thing was my intrinsic value and the second you know the the second curve is nothing but my profit and loss curve so this is how we have to solve the sum based on call option when they have given us buyers payoff so this was the tabular way and this is a graphical representation of the same okay so i hope you all have all understood how to solve sum based on call option whenever there is a buyers payoff problem given to us now stay tuned for other videos whereby we'll be learning call option sellers payoff and thereafter put option under which we'll again have buyers and sellers payoff. Okay now let us take up the first example to understand call option when we have a sellers payoff. So we'll read the question once. Uh, Mr. Raj takes a short position on a call option of ABC Limited at an exercise price of Rs 100 with a premium of Rs 3. Calculate the profit or loss on the option position of Mr. Raj if the spot expiry is as follows. They are given us various spot prices. 60, uh, it starts from 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 105. Also draw the payoff diagram for the same. So now in order to solve such sum tabular as well as graphically, okay, here is our steps that we'll be following. First we'll note on the heading, it is based on call option, seller's payoff. Okay. Now the table will again consist of five columns uh, having the headings as exercise price. We'll call it as X, spot price, we'll name it as S, intrinsic value, we'll call it as IV, then we'll have call premium received, we'll call it as C, and lastly our profit and loss okay now as per the question okay they have already given us that the exercise price is going to be at 100 okay so for all the optional spot price the exercise price is 100 okay so uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 they are given us 10 options so I'll you know, we'll post the exercise price for 10 options as 100. So that's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Now the spot price given are 96, 97, 98, 99, 104 and 105 okay now under call option the intrinsic value up to the point where your exercise price and your spot price is same the intrinsic value will remain zero so up to the point when exercise and spot are equal the intrinsic value for all will remain zero thereafter whenever there is a seller's payoff thereafter okay there will be the negative difference between exercise and spot price so there is a difference of one so we'll note it of negative one negative two negative three negative four and negative five okay that's the difference between buyers payoff and seller in under buyers payoff it was positive difference however in sellers payoff it will be negative difference now call premium the in the question it is given that it is exercise price is 100 with a premium of rupees 3 the moment we take a short position we are selling the moment we sell we will receive the premium so it will be positively written as positive 3 under each and every case so we have 10 options so under every option we'll write the premium received will be 3 
that was the positive 3 under call option where we have buyers payoff it becomes negative since we are buying so we will have to pay the premium but under sellers payoff we are receiving so these are the amount that we will be receiving so it will remain as positive so now the last to find profit and loss it is nothing but the difference between the intrinsic value and premium received intrinsic was 0 you are receiving 3 so we have a profit of rupees 3 again we will have a profit of rupees 3 intrinsic is 0 Premium is 3, we are receiving 3, that's a profit. Again profit, again profit. Okay, now from the point where your exercise and spot is not equal. Okay, now we'll have a little difference. Negative 1 is the intrinsic value. Call premium received is rupees 3. So the difference is 2. So our profit is only 2 now. Negative 2 and 3, the difference will be positive 1. So we have a profit of 1. Negative 3 and 0, the difference is 0. Negative 4 is the intrinsic value. We are receiving only 3. So there is a loss of rupees 1. Similarly, we have the intrinsic value of negative 5. We are receiving 3. So we have a loss of rupees 2. Now this is how uh, we have to solve the tabular way of seller's payoff. Now same thing. Let us try posting it on the graphical way. And let's see how the graph will look when we have a seller's payoff. So first thing on the y-axis we will note down. This consists of your intrinsic value and your profit and loss. Okay, we'll have starting with zero. We have now, now since the profit and loss are in the range of one, two, and three, so we'll have positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four, positive five, positive six. Bottom by negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay. Now, for posting on the x-axis, we need to write all our spot prices. So, we are starting from 96. So, we will note down 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. So, we are last is 105. That's our spot price. Now, let us start marking the plot or marking or plotting of all the points of intrinsic value and the profit and loss. So, when the spot price was 96, the intrinsic value was 0. 97 pay also it was 0. 98, 0. 99, 0. 100, 0. At 101, the intrinsic value became negative 1. So we'll mark it here at negative 1. Then we had at 102, negative 2. At 3, we had negative 3. At 4, we had negative 4. And at 5, we had negative 5. Similar, okay, so we will just join those points. So the moment I join it, we get a downward sloping curve. Okay. Now similarly, we will start plotting the profit and loss. So when your spot price was 96, the profit that we received was rupees 3. So we mark it. At 97 also it was 3. 98, 3. 99, 3. And 103. Now at 101, the profit reduced to rupees 2. At 102, it became 1. At 103, it became 0. At 104, it went to the negative quadrant as negative 1. And at 105, it became negative 2. So again, this is also similar to a downward sloping. So we'll just join it with the help of a ruler. Okay. So we can show it here that key. this is nothing but your intrinsic value and this was your profit and loss curve. Okay. So this is basically how we have to solve the sum. Okay. When we have call options, sellers payoff given and they ask us to solve it in both the ways, tabular method as well as graphical method. So this is one of the two examples that we have solved. Okay, now we'll see and we'll take up another example to understand the same concept of sellers payoff under call option. 
Okay, now here is the second example to understand call option seller's payoff problem sum. We read the question once. Jay takes a short position on a call option of XYZ Limited at an exercise price of Rs. 790 with a premium of Rs. 50. Calculate the profit or loss on the option position for Jay if the spot price on expiry is as follows. Then they are given us various spot price ranging from 750 to 830. They have also said also draw the payoff diagram for the same. Now let us see how to solve this sum both tabular way as well as graphical way. Okay, so first thing we'll note down the heading it will be call option sellers payoff. Okay, first column will have the uh, the heading exercise price. Second will be spot price. Then we have the intrinsic value. Then we'll have call premium received. And lastly, our profit and loss. Again, the exercise price given in the question is 790. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 options. So, we write 790 under exercise price for 9 options. So, that's the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. 8 and 9 okay now the spot price which are given to us range from 750 760 770 780 790 800 810 820 and 830 okay now in order to get the intrinsic value, as we discussed earlier, under call option, the point where excess price and spot price are equal, the intrinsic value will remain zero. Thereafter, under seller's payoff, there will be a negative difference between the exercise price and spot price. So, 790 and 800, so there's a negative difference of 10 negative difference of 20, negative difference of 30 and negative difference of 40. Now the call premium receive since we are selling the premium will be received it is given as rupees 50 so we write 50 in under all cases it will remain positive since we are going to sell it off. Now the profit and loss okay, is nothing but the difference between the intrinsic value and the call premium receive. When the value is 0, we are receiving 50, so there's a profit of 50. Okay, so it will be 50 up to the point where your spot and exercise is the same. Thereafter, negative 10 and 50, the difference is positive 40. Negative 20, 50 is, neg uh, is positive 30. Then we have negative 30 and 50, so positive 20. Negative 40 and 50 is negative, I mean the positive 10. Okay. So now if you look at the previous sum and the sum, none of them have gone into losses, but the profit has gradually fallen down. Okay. So it started off with 50 rupees profit and fallen down to 10 rupees, but it's not gone to the negative quadrant. Okay. So now let us try to plot this graphically. Okay. Again, we'll have zero on our, the origin. Now, since the profits are in the gap of 10, so we'll do that as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. Similarly, we'll have negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50. Okay, this is nothing but our intrinsic value and profit and loss values. Okay. Now, spot prices are given as 750 onwards. So, we write 750, 760, 770, 780, 790, 800, 810, 820, 830, 840. Okay. Now, let us start plotting them one by one. We need to plot 
the intrinsic value as well as the profit. First, we'll plot the intrinsic value. When the spot was 750, your intrinsic was 0. At 760, it was 0. 770, 0. 780, 0. And 790, 0. Thereafter, at 800, it became negative 10. Thereafter, it became negative 20. Negative 30. Negative 40. And lastly, negative 50. Okay, you join it, we'll come to know that there is a downward sloping curve for the intrinsic value. Okay, and we'll note it down as this is the IV curve. Now, let us start plotting the profit and loss. At the spot price of 750, the profit was 50. At 760, it was 50. 770, it was 50. 780, it was 50. 790, it was 50. Thereafter, it started falling. It became 40. Then it became 30. It became 20. It became 10. Okay, but it never went into the negative quadrant. So it doesn't matter. So we'll just join it apart. And the moment you join it, we will be having our profit and loss curve. Okay, so this is how we need to solve the sum which is based on call option where we have the sellers payoff. We have already solved some based on buyers payoff under call option. Those who haven't viewed that video, see that you'll even go through that. Okay. So with that, we will conclude that our call option under sellers payoff problem sums have been done. Okay. I hope everyone understood it. Stay tuned for more videos, which will be now based on put option. We have already completed the call option ones. Now we will be starting off with the, in the next video, we'll be starting off with put option where again, we'll be having buyers payoff and sellers payoff. Okay, now let us see the first sum how to solve based on put option when we have a buyer's payoff. So we'll read the question once. It's given that Max buys a put option. So he have bought here a put option of Reliance Limited at an exercise price of rupees 100 with a premium of rupees 3. Calculate the profit or loss on the option position for Max if the spot price on expiry is as follows and then they are given us various expiries uh, prices also draw the payoff diagram for the same so now let us see how we start first the tabular way and then the graphical way so we'll give the heading as we'll give the heading as put option where this is based on buyers payoff Okay, now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 different spot prices. Now for all the different spot prices, the exercise price will remain the same. So we will, uh, in 10 places, we will write the same exercise price. So that's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth. Now we note down all the spot prices from 96 to 105. So 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104 and 105. Now always remember under put option, put is something where you are expecting that the price of the share will be falling. So if it falls, you are in a profit position. Okay, now always remember the intrinsic value under put option, whether it is a buyer's payoff or a seller's payoff, the rule is, you know, under put option, the price or the intrinsic value up to the point where your exercise and spot price are same. Okay, before that, when there is a buyer's payoff, before that, there will always be a positive difference. So 196, the difference is 4. Then we have a positive difference of 3, 2, 1 and 0. After that, once you get the value as 0, after that, whatever value will be given, you know, whatever values are available, all the values or all the intrinsic values will be 0. 
So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, this is a sum where we are buying. So the moment you buy, the premium, the uh, you know, the premium will be paid. Since you are going to pay for it, the premium will be negative. So it is 3. So we'll have premium of negative 3 in all our cases since we are buying it. So we'll note down minus 3 in all the columns. Okay, now lastly, the profit or loss. Profit or loss is nothing but the difference between the intrinsic value and the call premium you receive. When the value is 4, you are still paying it 3, so there is a profit of 1 rupee. When the intrinsic value is 3 and call premium is also 3, your profit is 0. 2, negative 3 is negative 1. 2, uh, you know, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And thereafter, 0 minus 3. See, you can see all the values are same. 0 minus 3. So for all, you will be having a loss of negative 3. So this is how you have to solve the sum when we have been given put option bias payoff. Like very simple. And now we will use the same data. We will use the data and present it in our graphical way. So, you know, our y-axis is nothing but our intrinsic value. And the profit and loss. We will start off with 0. Uh, positive. Since the profits are, uh, are in the range of 1, 2, 3. So, we will rotate as We will take the gap of 1. For each of them. Similarly, we'll have losses, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. On x-axis, we always note down our spot prices. So it's starting from 96, we have 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. Now, let us see how we are going to plot. Now, we need to plot here the intrinsic value and the profit and loss. So we'll start off with the intrinsic value. When the spot price was 96, the intrinsic value was 4. At 97, it became 3. At 98, it became 2. At 99, it became 1. Then it became 0. And thereafter, it was flat line, it was flat 0, so for 90, for 101, 102, 103, 104 and 105, the values were 0. Now, in the similar case, now let us start plotting the profit and loss. At spot price 96, the profit was rupees 1. So we'll note it at 96, my profit was 1 rupee. Then it became 0. Then we started going in negative quadrant, so negative 1. Then we had a loss of negative 2, negative 3. Then we had negative 4. But now see, after negative 3, we had a call again a straight line with all the values being negative 3. So at 101, it was negative 3. 102, negative 3, 103, negative 3, 104, negative 3, and 105, also it was negative 3. So once you join the line, you will be getting, again, we'll have a downward slope, and thereafter it gets flattened up. So we again had a downward slope, and thereafter it got flattened. This is how your payoff table will look when we are solving some based on put option, where we have the buyer's payoff. So this was our IV curve. And this was our profit and loss. So this was the first sum based on put option where we had buyers payoff. Okay. Now we'll take up another sum to understand the same topic based on the put option buyers payoff. Okay. Now this is the second sum. We'll read the question once. Riddhi buys a put option. Again, we are buying a put option of ABC Limited. She pays an option premium of rupees 20. So option premium is 20 rupees. The exercise price being rupees 500. Calculate the profit and loss if the spot price 
on the maturity are as follows and they are giving you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spot prices on the expiry date. Also draw the payoff diagram for the same. Again, uh, table remains the same. We have the exercise price, spot price, intrinsic value, call premium and profit and loss. Under exercise price, we have noted down the values that is 500 and under spot price, we have taken various spot prices which were given to us. Now the rule is the point up to where the exercise and intrinsic value or the spot price are same. Okay, the price, the, the position where the exercise price and the spot price are equal, the intrinsic value will be zero. Before that, all the values will be a positive difference. So 500 and 570, uh, 470, so the difference is positive 30. 500 and 480, that positive difference is 20. 500 and 490, the difference is 10. Okay, after the point where the exercise and spot price are equal, the intrinsic value will become zero. Because under spot price, uh, un under put option, okay, if it falls, only then you are going to get, you know, if your spot price falls or goes below the exercise price, only then you are going to make some profit. Otherwise, no. Call premium. Now, you are buying, since you are buying, the premium will always be negative since it is 20. So in all our cases, we'll note it down as negative 20. Okay, now the profit and loss, nothing but the difference between the intrinsic value and the call premium. So 30 negative 20 is 10. 20, 20 is 0. 20 negative 10, uh, you know, negative 20 and 10 is negative 10. 0, negative 20 is negative 20 and after that all the values will be given as negative 20. Okay, so this is how we had to solve the put option bias payoff in tabular way. Now the same thing we will post it on our graphical way. So we have here our intrinsic value on the y axis and the profit and loss. Now since the profit ka gap is in 10, so we will note it all the 10 values, so we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and similarly bottom 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. The spot values are given as on the x-axis as 470, 480, 490, 500, 510, 520, 530. Now let us start plotting first the intrinsic value. When the spot price was 470, the intrinsic value was 30. When it was 480, the intrinsic value became 20. 490, it was 10. At 500, it became 0. And since then, till the last, it will remain 0. Similarly, profit and loss at 470, the profit was 10. Then it became 0. Then it became negative 10, negative 20 at 500. And since then, it would be a straight flat line at negative 20. And the same thing now we just have to, you know, join it and we will get our IV curve and a profit and loss curve. So it will again be a downward sloping and thereafter it becomes flattened. So this is a IV curve and this will be a profit and loss curve. So again, this is a 7 to 8 mark sum based on the question. It will be either answer 7 or 8. Okay. So again, a very simple way how to solve the sum based on put option, buyers, payoff. Okay. I hope everyone has understood this. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll be learning about put option, seller's payoff. And if you haven't watched yet the call option problem sum, see that you all watch the video based on that also. Okay, now let us see the sum based on put option seller's payoff. Let us see how we need to solve it both tabular way and as well as graphical way. First, we'll read our question once. Now it is given that Sohil writes a put. Okay, the word writes means you are going to sell off. Okay, so Sohil writes a put option of Max Limited 
at an exercise price of rupees hundred with a premium of rupees three. Calculate the profit or loss on the option position for Sohil if the spot price on expiry is as follows. And thereafter, we have been given one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten different spot prices. Also, draw the payoff diagram. Okay. So now let us first start with the tabular way. So we'll give the heading as put option sellers payoff. The table, the headings will be excise price, spot price, intrinsic value, call premium received, and profit and loss. Now, exercise price given in the question was rupees hundred, and since we had ten different spot prices, we will note down hundred in ten different places. So we have hundred one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. In ten different places, where we have written down the exercise price of rupees hundred. In spot price, we will note down all these ten different spot prices which are given to us: ninety six, ninety seven. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, hundred, one hundred one, one hundred two, one hundred three, one hundred four, and one hundred five. Now, whenever you are solving sum based on put option, sellers payoff. Always remember the intrinsic value before the point where your exchange price and spot price are same. Before that, all your intrinsic value will be the negative difference between the exchange and spot price. So you will have negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and after that, all the values of your intrinsic will be zero. Okay. Now, since you are selling, since you are writing it off, since you are selling, we are going to receive the premium. Since you are receiving, the premium will be positive value. In a now case, it is rupees three. So you are noting down three positive three in all the ten lines. Okay, and profit and loss. The last column that we need to actually find the answer is nothing but the difference between the intrinsic and the call premium received. So negative four is my value, and I'm receiving three. So there is a loss of negative one. Negative three and three gives you no profit, no loss. The intrinsic value is negative two, but you're receiving three, so you're earning a profit of rupee one. You're earning a profit of rupees two, and thereafter you're going to earn a stagnant profit of rupees. So this is how we have to solve sum which is based on put option sellers payoff. Now the same thing we'll represent it on the graphical way. So again on the y-axis we'll have intrinsic value and profit and loss. We'll start off with zero. Now since the difference between the profit and loss and the intrinsic value is in ones, so we'll take the gap of one. Similarly we'll have negative one. Negative four, negative five. Now, you know, on our x-axis, we'll have to note down our spot prices. So we have ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred, one zero one, one zero two, one zero three, one zero four, one zero five. Now we will start. Plotting our intrinsic value and our profit and loss on the graphical way. So first, we'll note down our intrinsic value. When the spot price was ninety six, my intrinsic value was negative four. At ninety seven, it became negative three. Then it became negative two. Then it became negative one. Then it became zero. And thereafter. You know, it was flat line of zeros. So now here, it like it, it goes in the upward direction, and then it became flat. Similarly, our profit and loss at ninety six it was negative one. At ninety seven it became zero. At ninety eight we had rupee one ka profit. At ninety nine we had rupees two ka profit. At hundred we had rupees. Three ka profit, and thereafter it was again a flat line of profit of rupees three, at hundred and four and hundred and five. 
so once we get the plotting we will join it so if you join it you will see that it is an upward curve okay it is an upward curve and then it flattens and become parallel to each other okay so now here the bottom curve is a iv curve and the top curve is nothing but a profit and loss curve okay so this is how we need to solve the sum based on put option where we have the sellers payoff i hope everyone have understood this this was the fourth type under the you know the main topic option so we had two sums based on call option where we had the buyers and the sellers payoff and then we have two sums based on put option where we again have the buyers and the sellers payoff i hope everyone has watched all the four videos again understood how to solve the sums now the second type of sum that appears is based on fair value of futures so now let us see what are the various formulas in order to solve fair value of futures and thereafter we will be taking a few problem sum in order to understand those concept so let us see how to solve sum based on fair value of futures okay now let us see what are the various types of sum which will come based on the topic fair value of futures now remember you can you are expected two questions from this particular topic so around 15 mark this particular topic carries okay now there are two parts in calculating the fair value of future the part one is based on simple interest the formula is given that fair value of future is equal to spot price into the interest rate for n months okay to make it more simple the formula is given as spot price into 1 plus r into n that is the number of months upon 12 Okay, so there are two methods. First one is based on simple interest. So we'll be solving three sums which will be based on simple interest. So let us start with the very first one, number one. Again, this topic is very important for all the BMS students. Okay, fifteen marks are you know are expected to come from this particular topic. Sure. So we will start with the first one. The cost of ten gram gold in spot market is thirty thousand rupees. The locker rent is rupees three hundred for three months. And the insurance is rupees one fifty. If the prevailing interest rate is ten percent per annum, calculate the fair value of three months future contract. So now here they have asked us to find the fair value of future, which is equal to the formula is spot price. Into one plus r into n divided by twelve. Now in the sum, the spot price was made up of ten gram gold, which is rupees thirty thousand. But along with that, you even spent locker rent of three hundred, so that get added to the spot price, and even insurance of one hundred and fifty rupees. So if only they would have given us gold, we would have directly taken a thirty thousand as a spot. But they have even additionally they have added some expenses that also gets added to your spot price into one plus the rate given is ten percent. So we will take it as zero point one zero into the number of months. Now they have to ask you to find the future contract for three months future. So it will be three divided by twelve. So thirty thousand plus three hundred plus one fifty together will give you thirty thousand. Four hundred and fifty into one plus. Now three divided by twelve is four, so we will take it as zero point one ten upon four. Now thirty thousand four hundred and fifty into this will give you one plus. Now zero point ten divided by four will give you zero point zero two five. Finally, we added up to thirty thousand four fifty into one plus, so that will become one point zero two five. You multiply them, and you will get your final answer as rupees thirty one thousand two hundred and eleven point two five. Okay, so you multiply them, you get your final answer. So a fair value of future for three months is thirty one thousand two hundred and twelve point two five. so very simple sum 
just have to apply into the formula get those values you know substitute the values and get your final answer now this was the first sum based on simple interest now we'll take up second and third sum okay here is the second question and the third question so we are going to start with first the second question it given that if the cost of 10 gram gold in the spot market is rupees 35000 and the locker rent is 1000 for 3 months insurance is 250 and interest is 7% per annum calculate the fair value for 3 months future contract on gold again they are asking us to find the fair value of futures Okay, formula is again spot price. Since they haven't mentioned us anything about compound, so we assume it is simple interest into 1 plus R into N divided by 12. Now the spot price here again, 35,000 was for the gold. We added 1000 rupees locker rent. And we added 250 rupees ka insurance into 1 plus the rate is 7% so 0 0.07 into 3 upon 12. So when we added up, we got this as 36,250 into 1 plus now again 3 divided by 3 and 12 because that will become 4 so it will become 0 0.07 divided by 4. So 36,250 into, now this would give you 1 plus, now 0 0.07 when you divide it by 4 you get approximately 0 0.0175. So last step 36,250 into 1 plus, so that will become 1.0175. So you multiply it, we get your final answer approximately 36,000. 884.375 to make it more stagnant we will take the value as rounding up at 3688.438 so that's the final answer so the fair value for future is rupees 36884.38 now similar topic but a different variation in the question can also be asked now let's see the third example Max wants to invest in Nifty Futures. The spot price is 6000 with a contract size of 10. He can borrow the funds at 12% per annum. Calculate the fair value of 2 months Nifty Future. Again, nothing new. It's a similar way. So first we'll find the fair value of future. Fair value of future. Again, similar formula. So that is spot price into... 1 plus R into N divided by 12. So the spot price in this case was 6000 into 1 plus R. The rate is 12% so 0 0.12. Now 2 months future so it will be 2 divided by 12. So this gives us 6000 into now 2 divided by 12 is 1 upon 6 and 0 0.12 divided by 6 will give you 0 0.02. So my value will be 1 plus 0 0.02 so our next step will be 6000 multiply by 1.02 you multiply you get the answer as 6120 now this is the fair value of future for one contract now here they have given us that uh, you want to invest in a contract size of 10 so therefore the effective total The effective total will be, now the future value of one contract was 6120. We have to multiply that with the total number of contracts. So in this case, it was 10 contracts. So we multiply by 10. So my final answer will be, the final fair value will be 61,200. We were multiplying this with the 10 contracts. So amount will be 61,200 rupees. So these were the three sum which were based on calculation of the fair value of future based on simple interest. 
okay now we'll be solving the second method which will be based on compound interest again there we have we'll take up a couple of example to clear the entire concept of futures okay where they ask us to find the fair value okay so now we'll start with the second method that is calculation based on compound interest okay now this is the second part where we are asked to find the fair value of future based on compound interest now the formula is for fair value of future under compound interest spot price into interest for n months which is equal to spot price into 1 plus r divided by 12 raised to the power of n so now this is the difference between the simple interest and compound interest now let us see how we use this in the actual sum the spot price of gold is 28000 rupees locker rent was 500 and insurance was 500 interest rate on borrowed fund is 12% per annum compounded on monthly basis this is compound based what will be the fair value of 3 months future contract now let us see how we need to solve this so again the heading will be we are finding the fair value so it will be fair value of future which is spot price into 1 plus r divided by 12 raised to the power of n now the spot price given here of the gold is rupees 28000 plus the locker rent of 500 plus the insurance of 500 into 1 plus the rate was 12% so 0.12 upon 12 raised to the power of n that is for 3 months so divide uh, you know raised to the power of 3 now 28 plus 5 plus 5 is 29000 into now 0.12 divided by 12 will give you 0.01 so it would be So the total is twenty nine. Now, now this will become zero point one two divided by twelve. So that is zero point zero one. So your value would be one point zero one raised to the power of three. So when you cube it, okay, the answer that you all should have got would have been twenty nine thousand into one point zero three zero three zero one. Now the last step, very simple, just to multiply them. Twenty nine thousand into one point zero three zero three zero one. That will be approximately twenty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy eight point seven two nine. You round it up, and we get the answer as twenty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy eight point seven three. So our future value under compound interest, okay, is twenty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy eight point seven three for the particular sum. so very simple the only change between the simple and compound interest is the interest part okay the rest everything remains the same chalo now we'll take up another two more question based on compound interest and with that you know this entire chapter based on futures and various types of futures that can come into your exam will be completed so now we'll take up the second and the third sum okay now the next sum is the spot price of nifty is 32750 the cost of financing is 15% per annum compounded on monthly basis calculate the fair value for 2 months nifty future okay so again they asking us to find the fair value so we'll note down the fair value of future is equal to spot price into 1 plus r upon 12 raised to the power of n so in this case uh, the nifty spot price was 32750 into 1 plus the rate is 15% so 0.15 upon 12 raised to the power of 2 now 32750 Into one plus now on our calci zero point one five divided by twelve gives us zero point zero one two five 
raised to the power of 2. So this will turn up to be 32,750 into 1.0125 raised to the power of or, or raised to square. Now after squaring this number, okay, we get the value as 32,750 into 1.0252. Lastly, when you multiply, you get your final fair value answer that is rupees 33,575.30. Okay, again, just have to substitute the value into the formula and solve it down. Okay, it's very simple. So, this was the second answer of fair value of future. Now, we jump to the third question. Now, it is said that if cost of 1 kg silver is 50,000 and the locker rent is 3,000 for a month, the interest rate on the borrowed fund is 12% per annum then which is compounded on monthly basis so compound interest what will be the fair value for one month contract so again fair value of future is spot price into 1 plus r divided by 12 raised to the power of n so the spot price given here was 50,000 for silver plus 3,000 the locker rent. Rate is 1 plus the rate was 12% so 0.12 upon 12 and it is monthly basis so ratio power of n. So here it will become 53,000 into now when you divide these two values you get 1 plus 0 0.01 raised to the power of 1 when we add it. It will be 53,000 into 1.01 raised to the power of 1, which is again the same value itself. So finally, you multiply, you get a final answer as rupees 53,530. That is the future value, okay, the fair value of future for one month for the question number 3. Okay, so with this, the sum which are based on future value under compound interest also gets completed. So in this video we had studied, we learned two methods to calculate the fair value of future that is under simple interest and compound interest. Okay, you are expected that you know either one of them or either even even both of them can appear. Approximately 15 marks will come from this particular chapter. Very simple sum. See that everyone practice some which are similar basis pay. Okay, just note down the formula and substitute the value. Okay, I hope everyone have understood that. Okay, now the last type of sum which is pending is based on the topic hedging where we need to calculate the future payoff. So now let us see how to calculate the future payoff, what are the various steps in order to solve and finally we will be taking a few practical sum in order to understand them. So let us start with hedging future payoff. Okay, now let us see how to solve uh, sums based on hedging where we have to calculate the future payoff now in order to solve the sum we'll first go through the steps okay the steps are as follows okay first step we need to note down the contract price now the contract price can be anything it can be either buying price or selling price depending on the question Second is settlement price. Again, it can be the opposite of buying and selling. Okay, so if my contract price is based on buying, my settlement will be selling. If my contract is price is based on selling, so my settlement price will be based on buying. Okay, so if I buy, I have to sell in future. If I sell, I'll have to buy in future. Okay, so that's contract price and settlement price. Third is profit and loss is equal to selling price minus buying price. And lastly, the total profit and loss will be nothing but your profit or loss that we have got from step number 3 into the contract size. Okay, so 4 steps we need to follow very carefully. Okay, now based on this step, we will start with the very first problem sum. We'll read out the question first. It's given that Jay takes a position in future market by selling Reliance Future at rupees 720 at an expiring uh, rate at the final settlement price was 800 calculate the profit or loss made if the contract size was 100 and also draw the payoff diagram 
Okay. Now, in order to solve that, we'll go as per the uh, as per our steps. Number one, we will have to note down the contract price. So now, contract price. Now, check whether you are buying or selling. So it's given here. He takes a position, okay, in future market by selling. So my contract price will be made out of selling. So I'm selling right now. So contract price is nothing but my selling price. Okay, and thereafter it is given that. So if I sell right now, in future my settlement price will be based on buying. So step number two, the settlement price. Okay, so I'll note down here that the contract price is rupees seven hundred and twenty. Settlement will be based on buying. So my buying price will be rupees. 800 step number 3 i need to find whether i've earned a profit or a loss so profit or loss is equal to selling price minus your buying price so my selling price was you know the contract price in the sum so it is 720 minus 800 So 720 minus 800 will give you negative 80. So thereby we have incurred a loss of rupees 80. So if I have uh, this is a loss on one contract. Okay. So now we need to find lastly the total loss. So the total loss will be loss per contract into the number of contracts. So here is given the contract size. So they have taken only one contract, but their one contract size is of 100 units. So it will be eighty into hundred, which will be nothing but rupees eight thousand. So our total loss uh, in this particular sum was rupees eight thousand. Now the same thing we need to you know draw it out uh, by making a payoff diagram. So see, very simple. We'll first note down the y-axis and x-axis. Okay. Now remember, on your y-axis, the above part will consist of profit. The bottom is made up of loss. Okay. We'll start with zero. Now, since the loss is of eighty per, okay, we have to go with the per unit. So what I'll take here is we'll take forty forty ka gap. So it'll be you have forty, you have eighty. Again, you'll have negative forty, negative eighty. Okay. Now, see very simple. How to draw the payoff diagram for future payoff? Okay, the sum based on future payoff. Whatever is your contract price, mark it up. So let's say this is my seven twenty ka contract price. After that, check your settlement price. Now it is more than seven twenty, so I'll just mark it out somewhere here, eight hundred. Now on the date of settlement we had a loss of 80 so at the date of settlement we had a loss of 80 so I'm marking it out the dot where i have marked out the loss which has been marked on the settlement date from that point we'll have to draw the curve passing to the contract price so here is a you know payoff diagram done this is my payoff diagram and this was based on reliance future so this is my reliance future so this is how we have to draw the payoff diagram very simple okay now this was the first sum now we'll jump to the second sum okay where we will be learning now what if there is buy and sell in the same sum okay so now let us see second sum i hope everyone has understood the very first sum okay now we are going to start with the very second sum Okay, now here we jump to the next sum, the second sum. An investor takes position in future market through the following transactions. Number one, so there are two parts here, A and B. So let us first solve the first part, that is part A. So we are going to do first the part A. Now the part A reads out that the investor buys six contracts of Tata. 
at rupees 2000 with a lot size of rupee uh, of 200 units which expires at a final settlement price of 2150 calculate the profit or loss and also draw the pay off diagram theek okay. hai so we will follow our steps number 1 contract price now in this sum the contract price is based on buy so we are going to basically buy so we will note down here this is nothing but my buying price so we are buying it at rupees 2000 so if my contract is based on buying my settlement price will be based on selling price so here my expiry date ka settlement rate price given is rupees 2150 step number 3 i'll have to find the profit or loss that is nothing but selling price minus your buying price so our selling price here is 2150 that was the settlement rate less your buying so buying was 2000 so here by we have made a profit of 150 rupees so i'll note down here this is my profit so now this is the profit per contract okay for one unit okay so now here it is it that it is given that uh, that investor buy six contract and in each contract consist of a lot size of 200 units now this is a profit on one unit so we need now need to find the total profit so the total profit will be profit per lot no not even per lot per unit into the lot size now here the lot size is 200 units and in that way you have purchased so you have bought six contracts So 150 was the profit, 200 is the lot size per contract, and there are six similar contracts. So the total profit will be 150 into 200, which comes to 30,000, and then 30,000 into six will give you rupees 1 lakh 80,000. So that's the total profit which was earned by the investor by buying. Six contract at two thousand and on the settlement date selling it for two one five zero having a lot size of two hundred. Now again the same thing we need to draw the payoff diagram. Very simple. Again we'll first note down the y axis and the x axis. Remember the bot the the top part will be related to profit. The bottom is related to loss. Okay, the profit is one fifty. So what we'll do, we'll note on one fifty on top. Similarly, we'll take a loss of one fifty bottom. Okay, the contract price was two thousand, and my settlement was more than two thousand. So I'll write it here, two one five zero. Now on the settlement date, we had a profit. So we'll mark the profit. Now the rule is wherever you have marked it on the settlement, from that point, draw a curve passing through the contract price. That will be our payoff diagram. Okay, so this is my the payoff diagram. Okay, very simple. Now that was the part A of the sum. Now let's see the part B of the sum. Again. Point number one, we'll just note down the contract price. Okay, now we read out what is it all about. You sell five contracts of HDFC Bank at five hundred and seventy-five rupees with a lot size of hundred, which expires at rupees five hundred and sixty-five. ठीक है. So now you're selling. So I will start with selling price. So my selling price was rupees five hundred and seventy-five. So if I'm selling start May on my settlement date, I'll have to purchase or I'll have to buy. So my settlement price will be based on the buying price, which is rupees five hundred and sixty-five. So third, I'll have to check whether I've earned a profit or loss. So profit or loss is equal to 
सेलिंग प्राइस माइनस बाइंग प्राइस सो माई सेलिंग प्राइस इज इन दिस केस इट वॉज फाइव सेवेंटी फाइव and my buying price will be 565 so here by again i'm making a profit i'm making a profit of rupees 10 now that is per one unit so now we have to find the total profit so the total profit is nothing but profit per unit into the number of units in a lot so it's given a lot size of 100 and check how many contracts were there there were five contracts so 10 into 100 is 1000 1000 into 5 will give you a profit of rupees 5000 in total okay again a very simple sum you just have to follow the steps and apply you know the formula that's it now again we will have to draw the payoff diagram again in the way simplest way we draw the x and y axis the top part is called as the profit the bottom will represent loss okay here the profit is 10 so i'll just note down on top 10 and bottom may negative 10 the contract price was 575 and my settlement was 565 so that is lower to that so it will come on the left side 565 on the settlement date i had a profit of rupees 10 so wherever i got the profit from that very position we'll draw a curve in a passing to the contract price this is nothing but a payoff diagram okay this is of hdfc bank so i'll write as hdfc and the previous one was based on tata so i'll note down here as tata okay so this was the second sum where we had a buy and a sell contract and you know how you have to solve that sum okay the procedure is same you just have to follow the same steps okay so with this our second sum gets completed now there's one more sum that we will be covering up under the similar under the same topic okay so now we'll start with the third sum okay now this is our uh, question number 3 i'll read out the question once it is given that raju believes that the stock price of reliance will go down he sells 10 future contract expiring after 3 months the lot size of each contract is 400 shares the short position is taken at a future price of rupees 270 per share find out the possible gain or loss on the position if after 3 months the spot rate moves to 260 or 280 so again two conditions are given first to we'll solve the first a part again steps remain the same we'll start with first contract price now again we need to figure out whether it is a buying or a selling now i am going to say is given that raju sells so we write here this is nothing but my selling price so we are selling it at 270 rupees so if my contract is based on selling my settlement will be based on buying price which is rupees no in our first condition the amount is 260 so we'll note down our buying price is 260 step number 3 is nothing but our profit or loss so profit or loss is equal to selling price minus buying price selling was now here at 270 but my and my buying was 260 so here by again we are making a profit of rupees 10 okay now that is per share so we need to find the total profit so total profit is profit per share into the number of share per contract okay so here is given the lot size of each contract is 400 shares Into the number of contracts that you have taken. So here he is given given he sells ten future contracts. So into ten. So ten into four hundred was four thousand, and four thousand into ten is rupees forty thousand. So our total profit is rupees forty thousand. Again, same sum, same way. You need to solve very simple. Okay. So we'll put that in a diagram. 
So again we will make our x and y axis. Okay, the top part is nothing but our profit. The bottom will be our losses. Okay, there was a profit of 10, so we note down 10 and just negative 10. Contract price is based on 270 rupees and my settlement is 260, so it is less than 270. On my settlement, we made a profit of 10, so we marked it. From that point, we will be drawing a curve passing through the contract price and that will be our payoff diagram. This is Reliance ka future, so Reliance, okay, and this is my payoff diagram. Okay, very simple. Now, chalo, the same thing we will replicate for part B. Again, number one, contract price. Now, the contract price here, again, it is same. It is based on selling price because here he has sold for rupees 270. So, on settlement date, we will have to buy so it will be based on buying price so my buying price is rupees 280 so third point profit or loss is equal to selling price minus buying price selling was 270 buying is 280 so here we are making a loss here we are making a loss of rupees 10. Now that is per share. So now we'll have to find the total loss. So the total loss is loss per share into the total number of shares into the total contract or the number of contracts. So here we have 10 into 400 which is 4000 into 10. So in this case we are having a loss a total loss of rupees uh, 40,000. Okay same okay no changes you just have to follow the steps now chalo, last step we will be making the payoff diagram so here we have our x and y axis the top part is our profit the bottom will be our loss now here we are making a loss of 10 okay so profit of 10 and loss of 10 okay now my contract price was 270 but my settlement was 280 I, on my settlement date we made a loss of 10 so i'm marking that point from that point we will be drawing a curve passing to the contract price and that is nothing but a payoff diagram okay so with that we have completed solving our third sum which is based on the chapter hedging and the problem sum will be known as calculating the future payoff okay i hope everyone have understood all the three different types of sum that we have taken again a very important topic this consists of around seven to eight mark in your paper so with that we will end this video here i hope everyone have understood thank you